science films i'm jimmy p filmmaker and sexual astronaut first up guys please check out our fourth feature film for free over on youtube just search for little monster or click on the link in the show notes below this episode i'm joined by a very special guest mr terry cooper director of off world and soon to be the director of his second feature film bloody students terry thank you so much for joining us uh, hello, and thank you for having me. So, uh, rolling it back to, in terms of when you were crewing up for Offworld, um, mm. had you worked with any of the crew before? I know you, you said with uh, Chris McFall, you Chris McFall, the DOP, uh, Chris yeah. Bevan, uh, obviously on the on the the gangster flick, and mm. um, Gavin. Um, but the rest of the the crew, um, I think they came via the DOP. You know, right. he suggested people he'd work with in doing commercials and, and outdoor shoots and stuff. Uh, so we we had Alex Bird on sound with Sam Turner, who was also recording stuff. Uh, Alex Priestley was our second camera guy. You know, he's he's gone off to work on features and, and TV and whatever. Um, so I hadn't met those guys before, but uh, it was cool. You know, they, they Alex and Sam and uh, the other sorry Alex and Sam and Alex Priestley um, all really like so professional i felt like an amateur you know these people are like doing all this stuff and miking us up and all that and we're like oh man you know because i had zero zero experience you know i i know i could act a little bit and that was about it i hadn't directed before and uh, i was like these guys are just getting on with it they're like right we'll shoot this and we'll move over here and we'll do that and with this you know that it's an art in keeping the boom out of shot you know i can't even do that so yeah, it was great. It was uh, really good. So thankfully we had um, an onset crew of people who um, who knew what they're doing and it just made things faster because we were working, as I said, ridiculously fast. And how many, it, it, how large was the crew itself then? Um, so we had, uh, we set up, out when we were outdoors in Park Penalta, we set up a little gazebo uh, for, it was kind of a base, so but it was mostly makeup tent. So we had uh, a makeup team of four or five people. Uh, they were students. And um, then we had, Adam was the producer at the time. We had, I think we had, we we had six or seven runners, but at any given day, we had like maybe three tops. Um, but it was nice to have more than we needed because, yeah. you know, I never used to understand why runners were needed. I'll be like, oh, don't they just stand around and like, you know, massage the egos of the actors? But they they literally do keep the wheels turning. They're the oil that keeps the wheels turning in a film because, you know, we'd be doing a, a scene and all of a sudden, stop, battery's gone in the camera or, you know, batteries, I need a new memory card or whatever. Runners, you know, we're in the middle of a field. Runners are like, I got it, grab it, rip off, jump in their car, get it charged, pull another battery back. You know, and even stuff like, you know, we got so cold that everyone was <laughs> trying to do their lines with chattering teeth when the runners would run up with your own coat or a blanket. And it does sound a bit wanky and it sounds a bit kind of, oh, I'm a film star. Where's my jacket? But it does help when someone's just not too far away and you don't have to walk five minutes to grab a coat. You know, they just go, here you go. And you go, oh, thank God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. But then the runners, um, you know, they were they were for want of a better word, amateurs, they were people who hadn't done that kind of thing before, but they they got it. You know, most of them really got it. And they were just like, you look cold. Shall I get you a coffee? And I'm like, no, you don't have to go all the way. And they're like, no, I'm. that's what I'm here for. Let me get you a coffee. Like, okay, then go on in. Thanks. <laughs> and it's, it's awesome, you know. And again, uh, people shouldn't um, slag off or, or run down the, the importance of a runner mm -hmm. because – um, while they're not glamorous and they're not doing the clapperboard and they're not holding the camera, they're every bit as important as as everyone else. You know, they they keep things going. They they get things made. They get things uh, working, and they uh, they get things to move along. Without them, you, it's like it's like it's like having rusty wheels and <laughs> nothing goes smoothly. You know, so. Looking forward then to bloody students. Are you thinking about having a similar size crew? Uh, 
Well, yes and no. I think that obviously everything will depend on budget. Um, we've already got nearly the same size budget as Offworld out of my own savings and my co-producer's savings. And we did a little bit of fundraising uh, last year, did a little fundraiser in August, you know, just via PayPal, et cetera. So I don't think we can make bloody students for 10 grand like we did with Offworld. Because there's some indoor stuff. We've got to hire venues. Um, there's a lot more sort of costume and practical effects. I want to do more practical this time because it's all in camera then and there's less farming shots out to people. Yeah. Um, there will be CG and there will be augmentation, blood splats or whatever you want to do. Uh, but um, I don't think we can make it for 10 grand. Uh, originally, my brain was like, hey, you know, we'll raise about 75 grand and it'll be great. And after about a year of writing and, and talking to people, I thought, we're not going to raise that much money, especially not in this current climate. So we're going to do this crowdfunder now. The goal is going to be 10,000 and that'll be added to what we've already got. So we might have like 20 if we're lucky. Right. If we if we can get over that, I'll be over the moon because it just means we can hire venues for a bit longer, another another couple more days, yeah. you know, and as you probably see yourself, if you had an extra day to play with, you could go you can look back over the shots and go we could shoot that bit again or we could shoot that line again yeah. and we can people aren't rushed as much and you know you get you'll get more quality basically and you know I, this plan is to make sure the actors are paid um it's not going to be industry rates you know it never is with a micro budget film but it's like we'll make sure obviously your, your petrol or public transport's paid if we have to put you up because my lead actor comes from the out, just outside birmingham we have to put him up somewhere and feed everyone and if everyone can go away with more money in their pocket than they had when they started even if it's 50 quid or something, it's still, you know, it might be more, it might be less, but it might be more. Um, it, it That's still better than going, right, well, I made a film, I gave, you know, I gave it two weeks of my life and um, I don't know when I'll ever see any money. I'm, uh, you know, it cost me a fortune in petrol. But, you know, I, I just want to try and treat everyone a little bit more fairly this time. Yeah. And, and the, the cool thing about it is that now we know we've got an American distributor going, show us what you got next. Yeah, yeah, no, brilliant. And what, what I find, and, you know, from a filmmaker's point of view, if you're able to pay some of the cast up front, it, it, there's a level of commitment from them. Yeah, it, so, it's... You know, it's... Penciling out, pencil out these weekends. Don't don't take on any other work. This is... This is... They, they know work. they're going to work. They're committed. And yeah. uh, it makes them feel good about themselves because they're like, hey, I'm, you know, because none of us are in the Hollywood system. Right. And these actors, as good as they are, I mean, some of my, my cast for bloody students have done award-winning festival films and, you know, they've done bit parts on features. Some have done a lot of TV and stuff. And I'm like, dang, these people are good. And, but they get up in the morning and they go, I'm actually an actor this morning. I'm going to work on a set and I'm getting paid for it. And, you know, they will work more in off world. We did have, uh, minor cases where people when we got through the week we got to like day four or five people were injured people were sunburned uh we had some injuries we had concussions and torn tendons and sunstroke gavin had sunstroke um and it was getting to the point where everyone's morale was sinking and it was more a case of where's the first day on monday everyone arrived at five to six in the morning but when it got to Thursday, everyone turns up at like quarter to ten and goes, "Oh, well, I'm not being paid to come on time," you know. And I was feeling the same way. I'm not. I'm not pointing fingers at anyone. I was kind of like, "Why are we doing this again? What's in it for us?" You know. And you have to try and uh, for me, I've got to try and maintain that we're making a film. We're making a film. I've never made a film before. This is why I'm doing it. And but for the actors, it's like oh, I come all the way from Cardiff, or where in one case, an actor came from Plymouth. And he's like, "Why am I here again?" <laughs> like i'm sorry but yeah and again if if the actors can come away with a, a a good experience a learning experience a fun experience and a couple of quid in their pocket for their trouble um they'll be more motivated to promote it to begin with to to learn their lines to work uh a bit harder or you know just to just to focus you know and uh, again i'll feel better knowing that if the film crashes and burns and turns into the biggest flop since Ed Wood. I'll be like, well, at least you guys got paid out of it. And they're like, well, that was something, isn't it? You know? 
So yeah. they learn that way, and I learn that way as well. And I've noticed, I think, with Off World, and, and as far as I can tell, with bloody students, there's a certain amount in 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 your mind of, of your precasting. So you're writing with certain actors in mind. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. Um, th- with this with this one with bloody students, we did put a lot of casting calls out. Um, uh, but there were one or two actors that I did already have in mind. I mean, the two leads. Uh, <laughs> my two leads are called Fordy and Trish. Right. And I had those actors in mind straight away. Jeff Logan, like I say, he used to live in Cardiff, but now he's up in Birmingham area. Um, I worked with him on, like I was script supervisor on some short film. And uh, I knew him through the cosplay kind of community. And he's he's just, he's, he looks like a young John Barrowman. Right, um, okay. but he's yeah. he's a he's a he's a proper like brume and uh he's really like calls everyone chief and i started writing chief into the script in his dialogue because he goes all right chief how's it going you know and he's you know, his bags of freaking charm he's you know he's a, he's a super nice guy and i thought he's cheeky chappy we need for the for the lead role and for the lead uh for the person playing his girlfriend trish in the film uh we've got mandy rose who lots oh, of people yeah. know of she's she's yeah. she, I, I see a picture popping up in everything and she's currently in Geneva at the moment. She's shooting stuff back to it. She's doing like six projects at once. I'm terrified. Now, this is a disclaimer. She may not end up in the film because just because she's that busy. Um, she's I, I contacted regularly. I said, are you still interested? Because she's like, I've seen her in so much stuff. And I have directed her in something that never got made. I directed a few scenes with her in. And I just love her to death. She's got a really... St- serious kind of dramatic side but she's got a complete nutcase side which i haven't seen yet but i've seen in in other stuff she's done she can go a bit mad and i'm like she can do comedy standing on her head she's super talented and i like i've got to write her as the lead uh actress in this so if if it turns out that mandy comes up to me like you know nearer the time of shooting and says I can't make it. I'm just way too busy, you know. Because knowing her, she'll just say, "I've just got a role as Doctor Who's new assistant." I'll be like, <laughs> "Go for it," you know. I'll be heartbroken, and I'll have to recast. But at least I wrote it with someone of her talent in mind, mm. and whoever we'd bring in to replace not just not just Mandy, but any other actor who may have to pull out because it does happen. Uh, at least at least they'll be written to a certain level. I'm thinking, you know, you've you've got some good lines there. Yeah. Um, with Offworld, one of our actors pulled out uh, a week before we did the outdoor shoot. He he filmed the interior spaceship scenes as the pilot. Wow. Um, and then he contacted me and said, look, my mental health's in a really bad place. I can't do a intensive six day shoot. Uh, and he was he was living up in um, uh, Lemington Spa. So it was like a long trek for him. And he said, I honestly, I think I'll fall to pieces. Sorry to let you down, but I'd rather let you know now rather than halfway through an, a location shoot. And I was like, yeah, yeah, all right. Not an ideal situation, but I'm not going to slag anyone off for that. So we were like, we've got like a week to audition for this for a new character uh, actor. And Danny and everyone in the cast just said, you do it. You can act. You wrote the blooming script. You know the lines. Do it. And I'm like, but I don't want to. You know that whole thing, that cliche about you watch a film and it's got the same guy's name in it millions of times. Written, directed, starring, edited, catering, all by me. You know, it just it feels like like an ego project, and it's not in most cases. It's people have to do everything, you know. And, and I'm like that. I I don't delegate very well, and I kind of, if you don't delegate, then you end you find up you end up doing everything. And sometimes, if you delegate and it doesn't get done, you get frustrated and you go right. I'll do everything then. I'll do that then. I'll, I'll show you how to do it properly. And you just I end up I make sure that my name isn't on everything if you watch the end credits of Offworld obviously I'm there as producer actor, director and like production designer but other than that there's at least 50 other places where I can put my name but I don't because it's uh, it's, it's horrible I don't like seeing money. it's like oh, I did this this I made the tea and uh, you know it's like it just feels like Hey, potential viewer, look how much of a genius I am because I can do everything. I hate that. And it's just like, it don't it look good. A, a hell of a challenge as well, especially for your first feature where, you know, as a director, you know, it's easier to stand behind the camera and, and see everything happening. Whereas obviously if you're in front of the camera and directing at the same time, surely yeah. that must be uh, one hell of a challenge as well. 
Yeah, and I don't know how, to this day, I don't know how directors, like people like Ben Affleck would direct and be in front of the camera. And I don't know how they do that. Uh, I found it really difficult. Um, Chris McFall did easily as much directing as me um, because I'm in front of the camera uh, for a lot of the film. So I I can't I can't concentrate on my lines and remember what he's got in view. Um, I I can give the other actors notes on how I want it played, etc. You know, quieter, louder, faster, whatever. But I still need an extra person. So you know, luckily Chris has directed stuff, and you know, and even Chris Bevan, you know, the first AD, he would come up to me after a take and go. That was good, but you know, and I was like, I ain't, I'm not worried about that. I mean, you, you know, whatever helps the film, you know. Yeah. Uh, I I don't want to be in front of the, the the camera for bloody students. I might throw myself in a cameo. You got to, <laughs> you know, um, do my little Stan Lee bit. But at the end of the day, I just want to be behind the you know, and direct it solely by myself, and you know, see what I can do. And that's that's one of the main reasons for doing bloody students, just to, to prove what I can do uh, under my own steam. You know. And so in terms of actors that you hadn't worked with before, as a director, you know, do you have a preference? Is it showreels? Is it uh, audition, you know, physical auditions when you're looking at new new cast members? I think we just embraced the whole um doing everything via showreels and self-tapes because um again it's hard enough to get actors together to rehearse when they've been sort of contracted to work on the film. But when they're just auditioning, to say to someone, drop what you're doing and meet us all in Cardiff on this day to audition, a lot of people won't turn up. I mean, all right, fair enough. You can say that that may be a reflection of their attitude. It's like, well, if they can't turn up for an audition, then there's no point having them in the film. You know, you don't want that type of person. But at the end of the day, some people just can't make it. So we put the call out and we've had, you know, a number of uh, people send self-tapes in. And I don't really use lines from the script, but for the character, say, for example, we've got a character called Cameron, and I wrote three lines for any character that we want to audition. One is a dramatic line, one is a really scared line, one's a comedic line, because they've got to sort of hit all three emotions. So um, we auditioned five or six of our main cast that way, and we had some varying results your mileage may vary um uh obviously you, you can't can't slag people off for whatever their approach is but you know when you when you get a self tape back where they've decided to say their own lines and not a word that you've written they'll go well i'll do a line that's comedic now and they'll do something and you go well that's not the line i gave you and then so well i'm going to do like a scared line but this will be my own version of it and you go can you not take basic direction? It's like, yeah, I I don't think you're going to be scoring any points for thinking outside the box here. It's just, just give us what we've written. Uh, so we did have a couple of weird things like that. And we had somewhere, you know, it's like, if I turned all the lights off in this room, I'd be practically a silhouette and go, hey, this is my self-tape for the character of Cameron. You know, or, or one of the other characters wasn't just Cameron, but, you know, the, the people in pitch darkness where you can't see their face or, and you're going, what? And, and and there was in the casting call you'd say we got a character called Tim who has to be you know look as young as possible and quite thin and quite weedy because he's he's that kind of character he's a younger brother of one of our characters and you know we have like a bodybuilder with a beard turn up and he'd be like all right I'm uh, auditioning for the role of Tim and you're like you didn't read the brief did you <laughs> you know it's like and and it's not that you're a bad actor you know one guy did say to me any feedback on my audition i said it was it was good acting but you're not suited for the role in the slightest i can't use you yeah and they said can you use me for anything else i said well look, if i can find somewhere where a, a person of your type whether it's male or female or or whatever you build or whatever if i can find somewhere to squeeze you in i've seen enough acting to prove that you can probably do a decent job but if you don't fit anywhere in the movie, I can't use you. And that's just the honest truth. And it's not because anyone's bad or whatever. So I, I hate saying no to people as well. I hate doing the, oh, you were good, but there was someone who was slightly better. Or someone else would slightly get closer to the idea of the character you've had in your mind. Um, and, you know, one of them was, uh, i got to give a shout out to Ang Harrod Ford, who uh, is playing our punk character, Kells. 
who's a kind of she's an homage she's a badass but she's an homage to Linnea Quigley from Return of the Living Dead oh, nice, to the yeah. point yeah. to the point where her, her character's surname is Quigley as well um because it does sound very British she's like Kelly Quigley uh yeah. known as Kells and her little brother is Tim Quigley so hello I'm Tim Quigley <laughs> so I quite like that it's like Tim Bisley isn't it um so uh I was at a loss as to find someone to audition for this character. And I literally went onto Instagram in a moment of desperation or inspiration, depending how you look at it. And I typed in hashtag Welsh actress. And, you know, there's lots of hashtags. I followed it and like I saw these ones with Ang Harridan. I'm like, wow, she's like one in festivals and stuff. And she's done all this kind of stuff. So I just dropped out of the blue. I thought this could be an absolute nightmare. I could get someone who is not very good or, or not available or, or way too expensive. And I'm currently working on, you know, a, a Pinewood Studios movie or something. And she just super enthusiastic, sent me a self tape straight away, knocked it out the park with every emotion, you know, including comedy, which some people can't do, you know, either or you can do drama or comedy or comedy, but not drama. And to this day, she's, you know, I mean, she's she's been working on her costume for months anyway, and she's given me ideas of how I can promote it. And if there's anything else I can do, she's even sending me little voice notes. You know, when I'm feeling a bit despondent about things, you know, she'll send me a voice note to say, look, it's all going to be worth it. You're doing really well. I'm amazed at how much you do. And I'm like, that helps. You know, it's nice yeah. to have a cast member who's invested in the film before they've even received, you know, any work or any money or anything, you know. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's uh, it's boding well. 